Hello folks, today we will print and assemble a desktop battle robot. If you watched all the videos that came on this channel, you might have guessed that I was delighted with robots. Surely, many of you are aware of the existence of a show called Robot Wars. This show appeared back in the 90s, but then the corresponding technologies were not so developed and now it all looks pretty boring. However, in 2015, a restart was announced and since then four seasons of this international championship of the battle of the robots have already been released. Technology during this time has made a huge leap forward and now we can observe how boxes of steel and titanium weighing over 100 kilograms literally tear each other apart. If you haven't seen this yet, I strongly advise you to do so. The last season of 2019 is simply gorgeous. However, at the time of the release of this video, the season of this year can only be found in the original for some reason reason. The Russian voiceover has not been delivered yet. By the way, in Russia, robot battles are also held, not on such a scale of course, but they exist and you can participate in them. Robots for participating in serious international battles cost thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars. Frankly speaking, this is not the cheapest hobby. So let's start with something simpler and cheaper. There are many weight categories. Mainly heavy and super heavy robots attend the battle bots. Today we will assemble a miniature robot in the lightest weight category, up to 150 grams. And let's start with a simple one, it will be a robot, a flipper. A link to the robot project can be found in the description below the video. I used a ready-made housing design, but I took a slightly different set of electronics, added wheel models and slightly adjusted the housing itself. A link to my version with a list of accessories is also in the description. So besides the parts printed with PLA plastic we will need, speed controllers for collector engines, these regulators hold up to 20 amps and can work with engines of up to 380 class and with voltages from 3 to 9.5 volts. Servo MG90 with a metal gearbox. This is one of the cheapest copies with a rotation angle of 90 degrees. You can buy much enhanced servos more and with a rotation angle of 180 degrees. Collector gear motors. Just look at this thing. Miniature engine with miniature multi-stage reduction gear. I chose 12 volts and 500 RPM engines. Looking ahead, I can say that there is more than enough torque and you can take more revving motors. With them the robot will be faster. A 2 cell lithium polymer battery with a capacity of 500 milliamps. It's better to order several at once. Such batteries need special charging and they need to be stored in a special refractory box. Radio control equipment. I will use this. Radio Link AT10. This this is a universal control equipment. With its help you can control almost any model. And here is such a tiny R6DS receiver, which needs to be ordered separately, because the standard receiver of this equipment is too large. There is a cheaper equipment option. This is a very popular Flysky i6. The standard receiver is also not small, but it seems like you can order it with FS2A receiver, which can be used in this project because it has several connectors for connecting equipment, unlike the rest of the miniature versions. If you understand this, please write in the comments whether I am right or not, or maybe you have a better option. So let's begin. First, we connect the engine to the wheel. We check the regulators for reparability. Battery and the controls already have suitable connectors, it's very convenient. This connector connects to the control receiver and this one to the engine. And this is the power switch. We buy two of the extra wires leading to the engine and solder them directly. Done. Now we need to connect two pairs of power wires for the regulators in parallel, because there is only one connector on the battery. At the same time, you can shorten these wires. We protect all connections with heat shrink. Check if everything works. We connect one engine to the second channel, it will be the left wheel. The second to the third channel, this is the right wheel.
on the regulators there is a small switch. If you move it here to this position, then the regulator will switch to the mode of operation with the brake. Sticks are now working in the wrong direction, but we will fix this later. The point is that if you first push forward and then back, the engine will not start spinning in the opposite direction, but will be blocked. This is the brake. This is necessary for typical car models, but doesn't suit us. Therefore, we return to the first option. We connect the servo to the fifth channel. For control, we will use the spring-loaded toggle switch. By the way, there is no such toggle switch on the Flysky equipment. You will have to use one of the on-off switches. But Flysky is quite suitable for a robot with some sort of rotating weapon. We go into the settings, select the fifth channel and configure the desired toggle switch on it. And here you can set the initial and final positions of the servos. This is very convenient and will be simply necessary if you order servos with a rotation angle of 180 degrees. Finally, we proceed to the assembly. We fix the engines with cable ties and fasten the servo. There is very little space inside, so the power wires and signal wires to the receiver have to be shortened to the maximum. We assembled the lifting mechanism. As the axis of rotation, I used Polish guides with a diameter of 3mm. They can be found in CD or DVD drives. But this is not necessary. You can use a nail of suitable diameter, a spoke or even a wire. There are still too many wires inside that you need to get rid of. But first, let's check if everything works. As I already said, the channels will need to be inverted. Now the robot is driving backward, but the wheels from the PLA predictably turned out to be too slippery. Here you need a rubber-like filament, but I did it easier. I printed discs of a smaller diameter and plastered them with pieces of the GT2 belt, which we use in our printers. It turned out not bad, with the new wheels the grip is much better. I also had to get rid of the power switches on the regulators and connect the wires directly. If you have a heat shrink of suitable size, then the factory protection with the regulator can be removed and you can just solder the jumper. In the kit, we have here two sets of upper armor, one thinner and lighter, the second thicker and heavier. I will choose the second option. In the left panel, I had to gnaw out a small depression so that the mode switch on the regulator entered it. To push the battery, I had to remove the bulkhead. We ram the wires and connect the level to the rocker servos. For this, I used a thin nail. The armor had to be slightly trimmed, so that it didn't cling to the lever, which would have been otherwise located as planned by the author of the project. By the way, the receiver was stuffed with an edge next to the battery. The flipping armor was screwed onto miniature M2 screws. By the way, the author of the project made it from thin sheet metal. I think it will be very effective against robots armed with active weapons, such as some kind of turntable. But it's also worth saying that in such a case, fights should take place in closed boxes of very durable material to avoid injury to operators by flying fragments of robots. We go into the settings and invert the channel number 3 and 4. That's all, our first desktop combat robot is assembled. No, it cannot turn over on its own. There is not enough response speed on the servo and the lever stroke. We slightly correct the position of the bucket, so that it doesn't hit the table. Now let's try to somehow test this thing, because there is no sparing partner for it yet. In general, looking at the flipper is rather boring, especially since it's still far from Bronco. Let's try to launch this astronaut into space.
and we will end here today. Next time we will assemble another robot, maybe with some kind of rotating drum with a motor from quadcopter, with which we may try to make out one of these two. Everything is as usual, subscribe to the channel, if you haven't done so already, check out the other videos, the channel already has something to watch. Support this video with a like and be sure to leave comments, and maybe we will grow to the creation of a heavy combat robot to participate in serious competitions. Subscribe to our social networks to keep abreast of ongoing projects. Good luck to everyone and see you soon!